Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. So I thought I'd jump in here and do a video. I'm out here today planting some tomato starts in the garden. Now these are really small starts. Um, I try, I'm try. i trying something new and you guys need to let me know if you want me to do a review on this. Uh, there's a lot of companies that are producing them, but it's one of these things. You seen these? It's like a, it's like a hydroponics type thing where you basically plug it in there's a water pump inside of it and it grows starts and things like this right here okay there's like a little pod inside there and it grows these tomato plants um, I'm gonna tell you right now the review is mostly gonna be negative does it work yeah I, I mean it works is it work like I thought it was going to no and I think for someone who was on a more on-grid less self-sustainable pathway i think it may work better for you anyway let me know if you want to do want me to do a review on that i can do one maybe i'll just do it for the patrons all right here's the deal so i'm out here i'm putting these things in and they're small uh it's got these little pods in there and um it's april early april and we just passed our last frost date a few days ago and so if if for some reason this doesn't work out, I have plenty of grow. I mean, there's not even leaves on the trees, guys. I have plenty of time to, you know, make other plans and try to do something different. Um, you know, so there's we have a long growing season here. So um, supposedly we won't get any more frost dates. However, in the past we have, you know, I think I've seen snow, a couple inches of snow all the way at the um, May 1st. So it can happen. The farmer's arm, the farmer, farmer, the farmer's, the farmer's almanac <laughs> says we have passed our last frost date, but it's the farmer's almanac. So roll the dice and take your chances on that one. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and take these. You'll take the little pods out of there and the roots are all contained in that pod and it contains moisture. So it's less of a transplant shock when you put one in the gar in the ground, supposedly. And I've read some pretty good reviews on that aspect. It's probably correct, um, but we'll see what happens. I, d I don't know on this yet. We're just going to throw it in there. I'll know in a couple days, like tomorrow or the next day, whether or not these take off or whether or not they're going to be okay. Um, if they go through too much of a shock, we got some warm weather coming up in the next few days. The ground temperatures are going to be like in the 50s and, you know, temperatures are going to be in the 70s, mid 70s, upper 70s. Lots of sunshine. So I'll know in a few days if these are going to shock out or if they're if i'm gonna need to start something different anyway got a bunch of those i gotta get in the ground i'm getting those in the ground today and i was thinking you know one thing that garden teaches you is patience most of the people my age who grew up in the 80s grew up and i've said this before on my channel grew up with the mentality of the 30 minute sitcom um you know a problem is presented and solved within 30 minutes or less and we just as americans have come under that um mentality and i think we're way off worse off for it as i'm going through here was, i've been out here already an hour this evening just putting these in the ground and you know i'm just kneeling on the ground digging in the dirt taking my time because these these plants are very fragile you know they're they're not um they're not strong at all. And so they require, they require great care and they require great patience to diligently and carefully put them into the ground and cover them up with the soil. And I'm putting in an amendment of um, uh, a little bit of calcium. These are eggshells. Uh, keep your eggshells, folks. And if you have one of those magic bullets, they work fantastic at uh, turning those, pulverizing those eggshells into a very fine, fine powder. And the finer the powder, the more they can be taken up by the plants and the root nodules. <clears throat> and so um, I've got, I'm sprinkling a little bit of calcium in each hole, but it just takes time. It takes time and patience to dig out the hole and then carefully insert the plant. I have to carefully take out the little pod out of this thing here and then, you know, put it in the hole and then sprinkle in a little bit of calcium all while tenderly holding that plant and cradling it and then carefully putting that dirt over the top of it and packing it in so I don't hurt that tender plant because it can be damaged very easily. 
And people today, I just don't think, have the patience for that. I think people have this romanticized idea of a garden. They they like the idea of a garden. They like the idea of, of going out and getting vegetables, fresh, fresh produce. I mean, who doesn't like walking into some of these supermarkets and seeing the array of how these or, these uh, fruits, uh, vegetables and fruits are organized all, all over the, the produce section of the store? Sometimes in some of these supermarkets, I know in Deerberg's in St. Louis, they, it's almost like an art how they arrange these, these vegetables. It's very pretty. And I think people like the idea of that. And they like the idea of a garden that looks nice and, you know, having all these plants, you know, and having everything neat and orderly. But do they, are they okay with the patience and the time and the effort it takes to make all that and to put it all together? Last couple of years, I just have not had the, the time to take the patience and my garden has suffered for it. And this year I am diligently trying to, me and my son were out here working the other day. We were out here working again today. Um, Joshua was at this camp uh, for unleavened bread and uh, he'll be back hopefully tonight. Anyway, but we're out here, you know, keeping, I'm, I'm arranging the blackberries and looking, I'm like the, the deer really took a toll on my blackberries last year. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to take some work. There's a few canes that are still alive, but it's just they ate so many. I don't know why. All of a sudden, the deer were like, ooh, blackberry leaves. Let's eat those. I mean, <laughs> that's not normally a problem. But they, I go out there, and they were chewed down. I'm like, what in the world? And, like, the tops. I'm like, how? it has to be a deer. Unless I have a giraffe running around the woods somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's like it, it requires work and time and effort. And most people today... They like the idea of a garden, but they don't like the idea of the time and the patience that it takes to put it together and make it look nice and make it produce. When you garden, and I've done videos before on this before, it's like going into a war. You're fighting against so many elements. You're fighting against pest pressures and disease and fungus and, you know, everything it seems like it's out to destroy your garden and it's a constant battle and you have to be aware and you have to be involved and you have to be interested. And if you're not any of those three things, your garden chances, chances are may not do well. Anyway, I'm out here today. Again, leaves are not on the trees yet. I got potatoes growing in these containers here. I've got some, you can't see them right now, but I got cabbages coming up and I got radishes coming up. Um, and, uh, I've got, um, some turnips coming up and, uh, what else? Potato onions are growing. I have gr onions growing. I got me and my son just planted a whole bunch of onions the other day. So we got lots of onions coming up. In fact, I planted in a couple of different spots just cause I want to grow as many things as possible this year. I just think that food's going to be so important. Anyway, that's what I'm doing. And, uh, worked on the tractor today and uh, repair, uh, fitting on the tractor. So I worked on that today too. Just lots of stuff to do around the homestead. It requires constant effort, time, involvement, interest. And if you don't have those things, awareness, you know, things that you want to do just may not happen. That's not going to happen by themselves. You have to be involved and interested and aware. So, all right. Let me know what you think. The 30-minute sitcom mentality. Is that what America suffer, suffers from today, among other things? <laughs> Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know where you're at on your garden. What do you got planted? What's going on? I mean, where you, I mean, there's people I know who've left comments in the recent past, in the last couple of days. Zach, we're still under snow. We need, we, we need the snow to melt first. So don't be too much of a hurry. Um, if you live in a place where there's a very short growing season, it may be time to move south. All right. Let me know what you think. See you next time on the Homestead. Bye. Alexander the Great. Did you know when he died, his body was placed in a coffin made of solid gold? Decades later, Ptolemy X and Cleopatra III stole the coffin and gold artifacts just so they could pay their war debts. Germany at the time of World War II stole all of the gold they could get their hands on, and much of it still today has not yet been accounted for. You see, all throughout history, when times get tough, people, either good or bad, seek real wealth they turn to gold and silver. The central banks and Wall Street cheerleaders would have you believe that gold and silver are just shiny rocks with no real value. But did you know that central banks around the world have for the last year been buying record amounts of gold and silver for stockpiling? Stockpiling for what? What do they know that they're not telling us? 
Genesis Gold Group is a proud supporter of an American homestead. They help people get out of locked in 401ks and IRAs into something that's real, physical gold and silver. If you're gonna be locked into something, it might be a good idea to talk to Genesis Gold Group about being locked into something physically vaulted instead of just a piece of paper that at the end of the day is just that, a piece of paper. It's a clear surety that our economy is headed for turbulent waters. The nation is currently over $31 trillion in debt and Congress keeps spending money and the Fed keeps printing it. That does not bode well for anyone keeping and saving money in savings accounts or paper denominated assets. Call Genesis Gold Group today, this instant, or visit them online at genesisgoldgroup.com. They can put together a strategy that's right for you. And be sure to say that you heard about them from an American homestead. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>